This year, I'm starting my journey to become one of the best 1,000 ranked tennis players in the world, the world famous Rafa Nadal Tennis Academy. It's going to be a mixture of intense competition and tough training sessions to get me prepared for the year ahead. So let's see how it went. We arrived at the academy the day before the matches started. So we jumped straight on court to get a feel for the outdoor courts, having practiced on indoor hard for the last month. And it was fun. Come on. Yes guys, so I just finished my practice session here at Rafa Nadal Academy. Hopefully we can go and start the year out on a good note. Yeah, it's going to be some good weeks of training, hopefully some good matches as well. And the draw for tomorrow's match is now out. So let's see who I got. Oh, I'm right at the bottom here. Oh, playing the seed number eight, a Frenchman. He had a very good run at the end of last year. It's going to be a tough battle of a match, but I'm looking forward to it. On match day, it was a healthy breakfast with some protein, some cereal, some fruit, and of course, the mandatory coffee every single morning. I took away some bananas with me as well before my match, and the courts were wet at the back of the court, so we had to go indoors. I practiced with a very high-level junior for about 45 minutes to an hour, really just trying to feel the groove. The matches were pushed to about 5 p.m. in the evening, so I knew that I'd have to at least feel the rhythm and hit some balls, um, otherwise I'd be going in pretty cold into my match. And we even played a few points, and this guy was playing a joke. On a match day, maybe not the best for confidence, but we got some pretty sick points. Yes guys, I just finished my session. Pretty good hit. Obviously it's different because it's indoors. I think today the main focus is going to be to go out there, work on a few things. Aggression, first ball after the serve and making sure I'm not dropping too many balls centralish so that my opponent can attack. And then after another caffeine hit, it was time for the match. So in this first of two tournament weeks, I played Arthur Bonord, a seed in the first round of qualifying, never the draw you want, but a great test at the beginning of the year to play a high-level player who's winning consistently matches in main draw. As you can see, started off very strongly, going 5-3 up in this opening set. It was an absolute battle. These courts were slow. They were using Babalat clay balls, which was quite surprising for an outdoor hardcourt tournament. However, you know, just had to try and grind it out against Arthur, the lefty, and we had some crazy long rallies like this one. We knew this match was going to be physical. And with some crowd support, managed to get through the first set 7-5, but after about two hours of playing already, Arthur began to pull away in the second, slightly struggling physically. I was really having to dig deep to try and take some games in this second set. However, Arthur stays strong, played his game, which he does very, very well, moving me around, pulling me out on that lefty swinger, and it was down to a match tie rate to decide the fate of this match. Having already played for nearly two and a half hours at this point, we were both just trying to hang on, trying to find ways of coming forwards to finish the points and absolutely hustle to try and win this match. Here at 7-6, an absolutely crucial point, managing to hustle really well to get that ball back. And here, as you can see, not quite doing enough. That was painful. And unfortunately, I ended up losing in a two hour and 42 minute battle against the Frenchman. But I used that frustration as motivation to get in the gym the next day, start working again and rebuilding for the next week. For the second half of this training week, I had my coach Paul there to feed me some balls on specific work and watch me in my practice sessions to really work on the areas that I felt I could have improved on that first match of the season. Yes guys, so I just collected my rackets. Currently stringing at 53, 56 because it is pretty cold out here. That's currently my string setup. I've got gut and explosive bite uh, on the mains, uh, gut on crosses. Uh, but yeah, seeing it is it's pretty cold. I'm stringing slightly lower than I would usually. 54, 57 is what I'd usually kind of go for. But I'm gonna try and get a little bit more control in today's match. 
move the ball around a little bit more and uh, yeah, try and find a weakness. And with a solid week of training under my belt, my coach Paul came out to watch this second week of matches and I was super pumped. We headed to the courts on Sunday, the first match day of the tournament, nice and early, and it was freezing. Did my match warm up in my tracksuits because I literally couldn't feel my hands at all. Doing some band work just to warm up the muscles in the morning, getting there around 15 minutes before the start of the session, before hitting some balls from the baseline and warming up for that day. By the time you go on, I think it'll be quite different. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Yes guys, so it's extremely cold out here, but it is heating up. Second week out here in Spain, so I'm really looking forward to this match. I'm playing a Spanish player, don't know too much about him. Paul's here to watch my match, so I'm super excited about that, and hopefully we can go and we can go and get the win. But for now, I'm going to go inside and get in the gym, do a little bit of a warm-up. But yeah, looking forward to the match. And once again, another caffeine hit, but right before my match, again, still too hot, to get me going. Week two started off as the first match on against Nicolas Rafael Goldberg. Alviani, a Spanish player, ranked currently around 1932 in the world, but he's been as high as 1600. He was definitely a player that seemed like he preferred clay courts. He was an absolute grind, so I knew at the beginning of this match, maybe when the scoreline's a little bit tight, if I can try and find ways to push him around the court, put him under some pressure, I might find some weaknesses. And I started off red hot. A lot of the work that I'd been doing in practice was with Paul was paying off. I was working on really holding that backhand side, holding the forehand side, and winning those cross-court battles and looking for opportunities to come forwards and finish the point. I went up an early break here going 4-1 up, which was great for confidence. We had some crazy points like this, where it was just an absolute, you know, battle on at the net, basically. And I went up 5-1, really in a commanding position, uh, feeling like I was controlling the points well. A little bit lucky at times, but sometimes that's the way it goes. And managing to close out the first set here at 6-1 was a great confidence boost at the beginning of the second week. Exactly what I needed, having lost first round last week. I'm also competing here for my first win of the season, so I knew it might get a little bit tight towards the end of the match, but that's totally natural. However, the beginning of the second set maybe got a bit complacent with the fact that I'd won the first set comfortably, stopped focusing on what I was trying to do, what I'd be doing in practice, which was holding that backhand cross, and allowed myself to be moved around the court a little bit too much and eventually making unforced errors. Now, whether that was because, you know, I, I'd lost my game plan, my strategy, or whether the balls were coming a little bit slower and Nicholas was finding his rhythm and his groove, no one will know, but I think it was probably a mixture of the two, but managed to find a break back there at 3-1. And now I was hoping to try and convert and try and break back in the second set, going three all 30 love up. Here's a great opportunity to try and sneak that break back, going backhand up the line, closing it out to go 4-3. However, Nicholas with the passing shot up the line to break back, this set was neck and neck the whole way through. Both of us having these small momentum shifts of one to two games, and it was gonna be about who could hold their nerve in the game once we got to the business end of this set, around five to six games through the set. And it was gonna be all about who had more patience and resilience. And let me, let me tell you, I was a little bit nervous to try and close out this match, to be honest. I kind of got sucked into his games a little bit too much and I needed to find a way out. Breaking down on those long rallies was seeing me losing his service games. However, managing to put up out some outrageous volleys allowed me to take it to a six all tie break. Now it was going to be a battle of nerves. I told myself in this breaker to try and do all of the things right, try and really hit through the ball, have no fear and not try and play his game and be controlled too much. He was hitting lots of spin and lots of depth, as you can see, moving me around, forcing me to just try and defend middle, but I found a chance to go up the line to win that first point at the tiebreak, which was crucial. Now changing ends at three all. This point was another point where I really wanted to hold that backhand side, such an important point, and it takes you back to thinking about the players who play great tiebreaks. Novak, one example, 
just didn't make any unforced errors and that was a similar mindset I wanted to take. No unforced errors, but hitting the right shots at the right times and really trying to still be aggressive but with margins. After pulling him out, I managed to take the lead. 6-3, serve and volley on match point. Putting the ball nice and low on the volley and taking my first win of the season against an ATP ranked player. A solid match. Yes guys, I finished my match. Super happy with how I played. Managed to pull out a really solid first set. Second set became a little bit tight. Obviously got the job done, get some more practice matches in. But yeah, overall pretty happy with the result and I'm looking forward to playing again tomorrow. Let's go. Straight after the match, I actually managed to hit with one of you guys, a fan from the Rafa Nadal Academy, to hit some balls for about 20 to 30 minutes. I also wanted to work on some specifics with my coach Paul of what I wasn't really doing that well in the second set. Uh, in my match, which was essentially those kind of put away forehands. I think I could have tried to be a little bit more aggressive. And so me and Paul worked on that for around 20 minutes. And it's great to have Paul as a coach there to do that with. And I also had to try and dunk this tennis ball as well because the intrusive thoughts won. And of course, straight after all that tennis, it's time for recovery. Now there are three main things that I always prioritize in my recovery. The first is a stretching and cool down, getting on the bike for five to 10 minutes, help remove the lactic acid from the muscles, get the oxygen flowing around the body, and also a stretching session where I'm working on stretching all of the muscles in the body, slightly more static based to make sure that I'm really loosening off and I'm not gonna feel stiff the next day. Number two is protein. Within 30 minutes of finishing my match, I wanna always try and get in some protein. I've been lucky enough to partner up with Scent, which I'm gonna talk about now. Scent is a whey-based protein powder, which I'm using straight after my matches to help rebuild the muscle tissue that is obviously broken down during the match. It has also digestive enzymes in it, which basically helps me before matches or after matches when I'm consuming protein, that I'm not feeling bloated, I'm not feeling like I've just eaten something. It digests really well. I'll usually use it if I'm at a tournament, as you can see, with some water, but I prefer it with some oat milk. If you want to go and discover Scent for yourself, I'd highly recommend it. Then there's an affiliate link down in the description where you can help support the channel and also try this amazing protein powder for yourself. My favorite is the chocolate. Chocolate tastes unbelievable. It's actually honestly my favorite protein powder that I've had in a very, very long time. Cop yourself one and let me know what you think about it. And of course, after stretching and protein, you're gonna to need to do some recovery in the spa. So I like to do this in the cold plunge and also in the sauna, making sure that I'm kind of going from hot to cold. It makes me feel very, very good the next day. And obviously to top it all off, a very solid meal as soon as possible after kind of finishing the spa for me. Uh, with carbs, vegetables, and of course, some protein to make sure that I'm giving my body an opportunity to recover the next day. Just off to breakfast. Also, second round of singles qualies. I'm set playing second match on, seat number nine. Uh, ranked around 12, 1300 in the world, so it should be a very good test. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm gonna head down to breakfast now and hitting at 10 o'clock. Warm up on the Monday was slightly nicer for my second round match. My opponent for today was another seeded player who I'd seen was very consistent and also thrived in the match tie breaks. So I knew today might be a tough test. So warming up all of the different shots, especially that backhand side, again, looking to control that backhand and then switching line every now and again, just to try and feel the rhythm. Then of course, moving on to the volleys, looking to just stay stable, nice and focused. I try and just hit as many balls until I feel quite comfortable. And if I hit two or three really good ones in a row, I'll call it a day. I'm not too fanatic about hitting a certain amount of shots. And of course, just grooving on the smashes to make sure I feel nice and comfortable. I'm good. Then it was on to serve and return. We both take turns serving and then returning. On the returns, I'm looking to just be nice and consistent. It's a lot hotter today, guys, so it feels so much nicer to be playing in the warm-up. On the returns, I'm just looking to be nice and consistent, try and find a groove, pick a spot as well. And then on the serve, of course, pick a spot and potentially hit the first ball if it's in the zone. Looking to really just feel nice and comfortable and uh, hit some high percentages so that when I go into the match, I feel nice and confident hitting to each of the spots. Warm up hit done. Playing today's match, the guy I'm playing is pretty consistent, gonna make a lot of balls make me play. So I'm gonna have to bide my time, but also try not to be strung out and play his game. And also remember that next week's the official beginning of the season, so have some fun, enjoy it. I think sometimes it's easy to, to see it very seriously, but obviously when you're playing a lot of tournaments, you have to also have some fun and enjoy it, so. In preparation for a intense match, I grabbed myself an isotonic drink, and of course had my infamous caffeine hit right before the match. So jumping into the second match of qualifying, I'd still have to win this one and one more if I wanted to qualify this week. The tournaments at the beginning of the year are always so much stronger than they are later on, so you're always gonna be playing three ATP ranked opponents ranked in the high uh, hundreds, or if not in the thousands, to try and qualify. I played a Dutch player today, very consistent. He started off red hot. Uh, he really just made lots of balls, made me play, 
and I kind of started off a little bit shakily. I wanted to try and be aggressive and therefore, you know, going down an early break. Definitely wanted to try and hold serve in this game because, you know, four love downs a pretty big deficit. So you can see me trying to come forward because from the back, I was actually really struggling to try and put the ball away against this guy. As I previously mentioned with the clay balls, it did make it very, very slow, the conditions, which also added to how tough it was to finish the point. But as you can see, trying to come forward as much as possible, but Twan doing a really good job of putting the ball in difficult positions. And I go down 5-1 in this first set. And I was struggling a little bit mentally, I want to say, from going down 5-1. However, I knew that anything can change at any moment. And this break here really gave me a lot of confidence to try and come back in this first set. Hitting much better serving, hitting some aces, and being a lot more aggressive and consistent off my forehand and backhand wing. Now, of course, I knew it was going to be an uphill battle, especially against an opponent that doesn't give me anything in terms of unforced errors and really makes me earn each point. However, I kind of try to just stay as relaxed as possible and stay consistent, draw him to the net or try and get to the net myself, managing to take another game on serve and another opportunity to break here and take it back on serve in this first set and pretty much almost get that whole deficit of big 5-1 back. You can see striking the backhand very well there, which I've been working on in training, drawing my opponent forwards and finishing at the net. And here at 5-4, this was a tight game. My opponent played some very, very good shots like that, which I wasn't expecting. And of course, here at 40-30, a second set point for my opponents, literally slipping over, which I didn't really notice until it was too late during this point. Nerves were high on this point. Ball just sailing long. Very, very close call at the end of that first set. I really had to try and regroup. I'd obviously gone down and had a really big mental lapse in the beginning of the first set, obviously losing five of the first six games. However, managing to come back and win four of the uh, three of the remaining four games, I knew I had the momentum on my side and breaking him first game definitely helped winning four of the last five games. This was something I was consistently telling myself that the momentum was in my favor. If I just keep doing what I'm doing, I'm gonna find a way of winning this second set. And that was the way things were going. And that was the way things were going. Going up here to love with another game where I had some more break points on my opponent's serve. I think he kind of took his foot off the gas a little bit, allowed me to really play a little bit more of my tennis. He was dropping in one or two more unforced errors and I was feeling a little bit more comfortable moving him around, coming forward to the net and finishing the points. Like I said, I really felt that that mental kind of attitude of telling myself that I had the momentum, that I was playing some good tennis was really helping me here. However, through love, in tennis, everything can change. And I do that, which was very, very stupid. A lapse in judgment from my perspective, which is something that you know separates me from the really top players, I think, isn't necessarily the, the ball striking or the level of tennis as such. Of course, there are differences. However, the biggest difference is these small lapses in judgment, these points where I'm not playing it smart and where I'm making stupid mistakes, the really top guys, they're not doing that. They're playing every game super consistently. And that's something I'm obviously working on in my game to try and improve. Here, I'm bouncing back nice and quick, even though it was a two game lapse. I need to really switch back on here, otherwise my opponent's gonna be back in this second set. On serve, again, still up a break, so I knew that I had that momentum on my side, going 4-2 up with a great lob, potentially saving this second set for me here and playing another strong service game on my opponent's serve at to go 40-30 up here. Really just trying to hustle as much as possible. As you can see, it's so tough to put the ball away and um, just finding ways of getting back into these points was absolutely crucial for, to winning this second set potentially and here serving it out for a chance. I had very, very good confidence and I think my opponent was preparing himself for a match, match breaker at this point because I was really feeling it. And I really wanted to make sure that I tried to carry this energy through to the final set breaker. I knew that the break was gonna be tight. My opponent had a great record in his match tie breaks. 
and I would assume that that's just because he did not miss. And obviously in the breaker, everything's a little bit tighter. You're a little bit more nervous. The racket head speed begins to slow down. That's something I'm obviously conscious of. So I'm really trying to push past those, those kind of demons, but I also don't want to over force it, especially in conditions where the ball was f flying through the air, but actually it was pretty slow when it was actually kind of making contact with the ground and coming forward to the net, just putting that volley over. A great start to the tie break, but I knew if anything that that point was an indication of how tough this tie break was going to be. We switch ends at 4-2 with my opponent just having that mindset of I'm going to hit one more ball than you, I'm going to try and wear you down. I was also kind of trying to do something similar, trying to move him around a little bit more. You can see me switching line. I was obviously taking those bigger risks, trying to finish the point. Um, I definitely think I could have either been a little bit more decisive, either played even slower to try and outgrind him. But what I actually think I should have been doing is just playing one or two more decisive shots, uh, really taking advantage of taking time away from the ball and coming forwards. You can see me here grinding off that backhand side, switching to the forehand, going nice high with spin. Potentially this shot should have been inside in followed by an approach. And, um, you know, still though, putting many, many balls on the baselines, keeping him back and eventually missing that backhand was, was really tough. I mean, not only aerobically, but also, you know, seeing this match kind of begin to, to slip away from me in this tie break. Shots like that were definitely some confidence boosting points. This was a must win point here though at 7-5 or 8-4. There's a huge difference when to switch sides. And once again, trying to get lots and lots of depth, trying to push my opponent back. He was holding quite a high position, so he was kind of just nudging the balls back, I want to say, which made it super difficult for me to actually kind of move him uh, because, you know, he was just putting the ball in a position where it wasn't a bad shot. It wasn't something which I could really attack off, but it also wasn't something which was pushing me back and making me hit defensive shots. But as you can see, moving around him, putting in a great slice there, neutralizing very well. I managed to put a great ball up the line, approach there, potentially should have come to the net, even though he had some great passing shots. And uh, yeah, absolute grind. Unfortunately, missing in the end and going 9-5 down. However, I hadn't lost hope, wanted to still fight it through. I said to myself, just be nice and aggressive, come forwards, let's try and win this match. Whilst displaying some great consistency on my backhand, unfortunately losing this match, being outgrinded, followed by some debrief with my coach Paul, where we actually talked about this being outgrinded and how I can work on my fitness, how I can work on the strategies to prevent this happening in the future. How can I find a way to beat these players consistently and not get stuck in those traps of just trying to make balls. Thank you for watching the video. Next week, I'm competing in my first ever Challenger Tour event at the Koblenz Open in Germany. And I'm actually playing doubles with a player who was formerly top 25 in the world for singles. Go leave a comment down below if you know who it is, but make sure you stay tuned and subscribe to next week's video. You don't want to miss it.